Welcome to It's Just Us. I have a lady sitting beside me. Some of you may recognize her. Some of you, if you don't know her face, I know you know her voice. I have joining me Dr. Anita Davis Defoe. Um, wow, Anita, I, I want to say your titles and what you do in the world, but I will leave something out because you're truly every woman. <laughs> <laughs> but in thinking about an introduction for yourself, um, just introduce yourself. Who, who is Dr. Anita Davis Defoe? Well, Dr. Anita Davis Defoe is the daughter of the late Lovey and Walter F. Davis Jr., mm -hmm. uh, my now deceased parents. Uh, she is a servant leader. She is a solutionist, mm -hmm. and uh, she is a woman of faith who uses her gifts, passions, uh, divine talents that God gave me in his service, trying to uplift people in places. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. how I would describe myself. Yeah, and that's not in your bio. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's why I wanted you to share that. So going back to your bio, exactly what do you do in the world? Well, what did I do in the, in the, the world for uh, faith-based organizations, okay. for community-based organizations, some in the corporate sector, really is to help people to develop programs, uh, develop systems and projects that really contribute to human development work. I do a lot of uh, workforce development programming, okay. a lot of leadership and youth development, mm -hmm. and most recently I've become very passionate about social enterprise, teaching nonprofit and uh, faith-based organizations how to really get the, the double benefit that it's, that it's called, and that's creating programs and many times businesses that you use as a vehicle for training, for equipping people, but also it allows the organization to make money for the programs mm -hmm. so that it's not the start and stop mm -hmm. that you always have with grants. People always call me asking me to help them write a grant. Yeah. And I will show them, and, and I feel it's my duty to teach them everything I know about grant writing, but I feel that I would be negligent if I didn't also encourage them to look at this other way of funding because it allows you to sustain programs right. and it also helps you to really impact people because when you think about many programs we've seen over the years, you may be working with someone, with someone you just start to see them make some progress, mm -hmm. and we all have habits that we're trying to get rid of for years. So you know you can't change someone in a 12-month program, mm -hmm. or and just when I you see the person is starting to turn the corner, the it's funding's over. Yeah. You get them a certificate and say congratulations, yeah. but to, for what? And so that social enterprise allows you, you know, an organization to create a business, uh, a program that provides something that you can sell in the marketplace, mm -hmm. that you can sell on a sustainable basis to help sustain your program. And so that's something I've become really passionate mm -hmm. about because I'm seeing organizations uh, really fold because they don't yeah. have any money. Yeah. And the way that contracts are being paid out now, most of them are pay for performance. And so if you don't have any earned income, if you don't have any money prior to it, mm -hmm. you can't even start up because it may take 30 days, 60 days before you can invoice and then if you see in our churches the church was always the beacon in our communities and now with so many people unemployed they're not able yeah. to pay tithes and offerings that they want right so the church is not able to sustain its work and and we need money to do God's work and his business as well right. and so that's what I've really become passionate about in the last five years and really been focusing beyond some of the other things I've done over the years. Yeah, that's very really important too. And just thinking about um, the church in particular, and you know, you just don't think about it that way. Mm -hmm. You know, you think you go into this place, and I don't know where we thought money was coming from mm -hmm. <laughs> because mm -hmm. the church has always been there. And it's like, no, it takes all of these different avenues and vehicles of bringing, we won't call it income because mm -hmm. it's not income, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but bringing in resources and um, funding, if you will, to sustain just that ground level of the, the church or the ground level of that nonprofit 
for them to build upon because you can get so much more work done mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. you don't have that that money conversation hanging over your mm -hmm. head. The mm -hmm. money conversation is going to be over your head, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be hanging over your mm -hmm. head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Because whether you're doing the ministries in the church or whether you're running an after-school program, you need resources, you know, to do this. Mm -hmm. If you want to feed the hungry, you want to have a, a, a youth activity at the church. So the resources, so it really enables organizations to provide a double benefit. Mm -hmm. Because yes, your grants can be kind of the icing on the cake, but you have money to sustain programs. And then many of the programs have specific eligibility requirements. Mm -hmm. So if Anita comes and I don't fit into one of the buckets, wow. you can't serve me right. unless you have some other money because I don't meet the criteria and you know you can't enroll me because if you do, when the program, the funder comes as a check, you're going to be out of compliance because mm -hmm. I didn't fit. So mm -hmm. learning how to really create streams of income so yeah. that you can really support the ministry that enables you know the organization to be more impactful and you can right. help you know help more people and so that is something that has been put in my heart and spirit for the last few years that I've just been really pushing, pushing mm -hmm. social enterprise. People were looking at me like I was crazy in the grant writing class because they were some of them like, "Where she come about starting a business? We don't have no money, and we can't do this. Mm -hmm. I just want to write a grant." Mm -hmm. But now more and more people are coming back to me and saying, "I see what you're saying," and I've given them, you know, some models to look at. There's uh, Charlene, this incredible program in San Francisco. They have been for over 40 some years. 90% of all their funding comes from their businesses they run. And guess who runs the businesses? Ex-offenders and former substance abusers. Wow. They have a, a moving company. Mm -hmm. They have a restaurant. They have a book binding. They have upholstery. They have Christmas decorations. Mm -hmm. um, it uh, is in San Francisco, and I had an opportunity to go there to look at their model and, and even do some work. And it was an amazing feeling that day when I was there that me and one of the uh, workers, and he had just been promoted because they're very much on each one, teach one. Uh -huh. um, he had moved up to, he would make the soups every day, so I had worked with him in the kitchen yeah. to make the soup that was sold in their restaurant. Mm -hmm. And if you have this, they have this lovely restaurant. Nobody gets paid, but and they're all all people that have in the world consider barriers. But you see how they've been working and they're running these businesses. So yeah. I know it can be it can be done. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's good stuff. So did you actually have a personal experience yourself where you were in the thick of this thing that needed the social enterprise concept? Or did you just learn that by doing and working with others around you? Well, it's been both. It's been over the last 10 years seeing uh, nonprofit and faith organizations struggling to really do their work mm -hmm. on the level that they want. And then uh, running a, a nonprofit in the Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. And we were about 80% grant funded. So we were always either writing a grant yeah. or looking for a grant. Yeah. And I started to see it then. And then, you know, just looking at the trends and seeing the research. And I'd say I'm, I'm an, an information junkie, so I'm always looking to see what and reading. Yeah. And the trends kept saying there's a fourth sector coming. That mm -hmm. If organizations are going to make it, they really need to embrace and look in, you know, to social social yeah, entrepreneur yeah mm -hmm. because and it's a growing it's a growing movement there's more uh colleges starting to offer degrees and programs in them people can even take classes i took a couple classes online through this um this program which is a social enterprise itself called coursera have you heard mm -hmm. of coursera has a uh, hundred and i think it's about a hundred and ten universities and colleges globally mm -hmm. that are on this platform and you can take any class free i, I <laughs> took a i took a wow. social entrepreneurship class from um uh, copenhagen Biz business school mm -hmm. i took another one university of pennsylvania mm -hmm. a social enterprise and if you go on that site you see all kinds of classes and then for people who you know are trying to build their resume uh they can can do something uh, called getting a um, a 
a certificate that is that is a valid certificate mm -hmm. that uh, they take your picture so that they have your identity and say and so that they can say it's you doing the work. They even have you to do something where they they record your keystrokes so that they know that it's you on the computer. I, I'm telling you, and then you wow. and again you get this you know this valid certificate that somebody could use, you know, in their career if they're looking for a job or yes. they're looking. But all kinds wow. of, and someone, they created this enterprise because they feel that that, it is that, edu and that education should be free. Should be free. Yeah. And so wow. that's, a, it's a, just a fabulous resource that I kind of stumbled on mm -hmm. when I was looking, doing some research for social enterprise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's how so many things happen. You just get it, like you said earlier, that you just like your information junkie. Mm -hmm. You dig, you look, you dig, you look, and then you stumble across something. Mm -hmm. But for that to be offered and for it to be free mm -hmm. means that there is definitely a need for people to get this information mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. do something with it because we have too many unstable things in the world, organizations in the world that we need their stability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We really need them to mm -hmm. be stable mm -hmm. in order to help people and to empower people. But if you don't have that funding, and it's got to come from multiple streams. Exactly. You know, like you said earlier, we can't, as it pertains to the church, we can't just depend on the, the saints, if you will, mm -hmm. to fund the ministry. No. It's got to have, we got to have something else. You yeah, have, because many of them are struggling themselves, and, and so many of them are unemployed and want to give, but mm -hmm. cannot mm -hmm. give. And... As I said, the church was always the beacon of light and hope in yeah. the communities. And because right after the, the Great Recession of 2009, it's been a challenge for, for almost everybody. It's just, it, it may differ based upon your circumstances, right. but from the millionaire to the unemployed, everybody has seen some shifts in their life and, 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 and money. Mm -hmm. And so the, the access to education, I guess this is why this group came up with Coursera. There's another one called edX. Their classes are, are free. And so you can take very quality classes uh, on Coursera. Like I said, University of Pennsylvania is on there. Duke is on there. Uh, UNC Chapel Hill is on there. Uh, you just you name it. Mm -hmm. These colleges that they have certain classes and a range of topics mm -hmm. that they offer. When I was in my social uh, enterprise class, there was some twenty, thirty thousand of us in the class. They call them mocks, wow. uh, massive online uh, courses. They call them. Okay. And, and, <laughs> and it's they're global. Yeah. And what's interesting is as a result of uh, the one I was in. There's a group of us that have come and we're working on this global social enterprise that we're trying to create for craftspeople because mm -hmm. a lot of rural craftspeople that make beautiful jewelry, they make, oh. you know, pretty, uh, they may do um, uh, linens, they may do all kinds of things, but getting their stuff to the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And so this project is a project to really be a portal for them so that they can not just be selling in their villages, but you can take it to the global marketplace. Yeah. And so and we're working on that. And I've, as, and on the team, there's someone from almost every country. Mm -hmm. There's me from the U.S., there's some folks there from, from India, there's some people there from uh, uh, Amsterdam, just a wide range that have come together. I, pa I pass across mm -hmm. because of this interest in serving. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And there's so much, as I mentioned, there's so much to do in the world. Um, just so much. You you are a, <laughs> you're a walking institution. You really are. And I know, I know. It's, <laughs> I didn't mean to weigh you down with it. It felt heavy. And you're like, ooh, the whole institution. But you are. And part of what you do also is around coaching and mentoring and leadership. Mm -hmm. And I only have so much time for mm -hmm, my show, mm -hmm. so what we're going to do is, is pause, we're going to put a comma here, and wrap this show up, Okay. but I want you to um, stay with me, and we're going to have a part two, and we're going to talk about how you do your work in empowering and coaching and leading people, because you, you're a part of a leadership team as well, yes. so we're going to talk about that. Yes. You got time? We, I sure do. <laughs> okay. okay. It's just us. I'm Charlene Bowden with Dr. Anita Davis-Defoe. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back.